Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, uh, episode 420. Uh, each week yeah, we meet here to uh, uh, review the questions uh, asked and answered on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today we have David Rosam. David is a uh, um, webmaster of... Um, davidrosam.com. Uh, he's a leading internet marketer. He's based in the sunny south of the UK in West Sussex with sunshine today. Yeah, and sunshine. <laughs> we also Fancy have um, Tim Kappa. Tim is based about 100 miles north of London. Um, he's uh, in Corby. Um, He's uh, also a Google product expert in the uh, um, Google My Business community. And Masataki Wasa is webmaster of wasaweb.net. Uh, um, he resides in Wimbledon um, in London. All right. Um, we have... Um, 12 questions. Um, it's from the first one from Zachary Michael. Uh, it's titled Any Input is Much Appreciated. Um, he goes on to say, I'm looking for some help. I rank in Google in the first position for SEO company in my town in the map pack. And many variants of this search term, sometimes second or third in organic listings. I get about 700 uh, impressions monthly and only uh, uh, receive around uh, uh, three clicks. Um, although I'm in the first position locally, I'm trying to increase the clicks by split testing and title tags and updating my content. But if Google would ever re index my website, but I don't even know if it's worth my limited time at this point. I understand that this search term is competitive and there are a lot of paid ads that take up a lot of space uh, on the search engine results page, but you would think I would be receiving more clicks in the first local spot, especially being SEO services. I'm just confused on strategy and what avenue to take to get more people to my SEO services website. And the input is much appreciated. Thank you. Um, okay, so what Zachary is not taking into account uh, is what the intent was that they were searching. Um, so they could have been searching for a lot of things and your impressions is, you know, the, how many of those were abandoned, how many of those were looking for other things, how many of those were looking for an actual company name that they knew, et cetera, et cetera. Um, uh, there's also the other thing that you're not taking into account, even pos position one of X amount of um, position one on X amount of say searches doesn't guarantee you those amount of clicks. I think the last time I, up I checked on the updates, they estimated that you a position one will only get roughly 33% of those potential uh, those search queries so wh what did they say uh, i can't remember what it, he, he said he was getting clicked through did he say black anyway so out of 700 impressions um in theory you could expect about 200 roughly out of that clicks but that's assuming all of them were directly searching for that. You don't know what the actual intent was or what they were searching for. Um, yeah, so yeah, it, it kind of sounds about right. Um, you can't really split test things on GMB, you know, in the local pack. That is it. You know, if people are going to, uh, what you could do with your GMB is, you know, sort of maybe look at your description maybe look at um, some increasing some of your reviews, making sure you ask customers for reviews. 
um, get some, you know, decent images of the officers or whatever the case may be. Um, but the point being is, at the end of the day, is someone might search it, they may not click it, you know. Um, and uh, unfortunately, that's just the way shit works sometimes. Okay. We'll call that a wrap for Zachary, will we? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Before we move on, must thank people like Christine Hansen. Uh, uh, you can see uh, her answer is on the screen. Um, and the, the, the effort that um, Christine and um, uh, other admins we have on our WCA Questions website um, is just enormous and makes uh, WCA Questions such a, a valuable resource. Thank you. All right, uh, let's have a look at uh, number two on our run list. Um, and it, it's titled, Why the Rank, uh, Why Has the Rank Jumped and Skipped the Second to the Fourth Sites? That's uh, for Germs Pax. And um, Germs goes on to say, he said, Hello, I'm really new to SEO. And here's my dumb question. Please help. He said, it's my understanding that the numbers I encircled, eh, the picture can be seen on the WCA Questions Facebook group. Right? Um, the number of numbers that I encircled is the website ranking. If it is, can someone please explain to me why the rank jumped and skipped the uh, second to the uh, fourth sites? I performed another search using different keywords and it did the same thing. Your help is Greatly appreciated. Don't fight over it. There's plenty there. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't use that tool, so uh, I don't know what, you know. <clears throat> no, it's a shame that we can't see the. Uh... It, you know, it's the toolbar in the search results where it puts some metrics underneath each search result in organic listings. I don't know mm -hmm. who makes that. I don't know who, who, which tool creates that toolbar thing. The last time I saw that was 20 years ago with freaking Alexa or whatever. It I, was. I was going to say about 100 years ago, but. Uh... <laughs> yeah. I mean, <clears throat> Kaiser says it pretty well done, you know, like all of those are, you know, uh, you know, those are all, uh, he, uh, he was saying those, that's not rankings, they're DAPAs or whatever. Yeah, they are, they are pretty useless because they were all created by third party tools who are trying to guesstimate all sorts of different metrics to create their numbers. So like, yeah. <sighs> you know, if you're looking at different sites and why they're appearing where for a particular search query, you know, you can do, you know, some proper competitor analysis uh, on those sites. Uh, I wouldn't rely on sort of third party metrics like DAs and PAs and all sorts of what it was. You know, you should you should uh, dive dive a bit deeper than that, and and try and understand what you know what, why they're appearing for that. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. All right, uh, let's move on to the next, and uh, this one is from Jessica Cha. It's titled SEO Opinions Regarding Switching WordPress uh, Theme. Um, Jessica goes on to say, I've been seeing a few articles uh, about the benefit of using Cadence theme, brackets free version. Um, I'm interested in switching over from my current WordPress theme, Kale, uh, this theme is catered for food blogs. Um, while I have a um, uh, a skincare blog plus 
um, looks like Cadence has more design flexibility. That said, I'm debating whether to switch over now where I have around 30 posts. I'm just worried about the potential negative SEO impact from switching uh, to Cadence uh, free version. Should I switch over now or just keep using my uh, existing theme? Thank you. Well, um, the question, it's unlikely that the swapping, that the, just swapping a theme will have a, uh, a negative effect. But the, the question is, does um, Cadence have um, better uh, SEO metrics than Kale? Um, and why do you want to uh, move on from Kale? Uh, do you think it's, have you measured it and found it's not particularly good? Maybe it's uh, Core Web Vitals or something, is, uh, because that's in the, in the news at the moment, is not, not good? I, I don't know. Are you feeling that, uh, that there's some performance problems? Um, I'm a little bit concerned that, that uh, Cadence is, especially, is, is designed for food blogs when you have a skin care blog. Um, quite often, um, free WordPress uh, themes don't have very much um, flexibility. You find that the, uh, I, I don't know if, if this, this is a case with Cadence, but I've, I've seen it a few times, which is that the, fr the free version um, is set up for one thing. Uh, if you want to move away from, from, from that one thing to something else, you need to buy the, the paid for version. I don't even know if Cadence has got uh, uh, a paid for version. Um, so I guess let's, let's go back and try and make some sense of that. Um, why do you want to move um, away from your current uh, theme? Um, are you just fed up with it? Um, do you have a, uh, a good reason? Have you done some measurements and found that it's, it's slow or something? Um, do you think it's, uh, um, it's not very easy to use for your, for your customers? You know, the, the, have a think about why you, you want to move on. If you're just a bit fed up with it, maybe that's not a good enough reason to move on. Um, and you, unless you try Cadence out on staging um, and run a few tools over it, um, you may not know uh, whether Cadence is going to be any better than Kale. Um, so switching switching per se shouldn't make any difference um, but if you swap a comparatively well performing uh, theme for a comparatively worse performing theme then you may get a potential then you will get a well then you may get a negative SEO impact thank you David yeah the, the other thing you could also look at is you know your site if your site is literally, a homepage, some internals and a blog, like it may actually be worth your while just picking something kind of a design that you like and just getting an actual developer to hard code it. I know it's a bit difficult these days because 99% of developers rely on plug and play crap. So I don't even know why they call themselves developers or personal rant. Um, but yeah, I mean, literally, you could you, you 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 could you could get a designer to 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 you know co you know design it up code this up um yes it will cost you a few hundred but you'll have a super super light super well designed to your spec and uh, you know you're not relying on all the code bloat that comes with themes yeah, good advice, I think, Tim. The trick is finding the developers. <laughs> and then when you find the best developer ever, like, uh, say, uh, up in the north of England, uh, um, Andy... Uh, trick is, is that there. bloody developer is too freaking busy. 
my site, my new site has been sitting for over a year now and it's still not live. In fact, I'm going to message him right now. That's it. I'm messaging him now. <laughs> Tell him to come on and join us. Send, send him the, the URL. Um, look, I, I just wanted to point out um, um, Jessica said, um, um, I'm just worried about the potential negative SEO impact from switching to cadence. Um, and uh, I just point out to Jessica that um, negative. SEO is normally uh, applied where a competitor has um, using uh, all sorts of uh, tricks to um, diminish your site so that their site can rise. And yes, uh, it, it is a thing. Okay, um, let's move on to the next. Um, this is number four. Uh, it's titled City Pages for Silos from Lee Maloney. Uh, he says, hi, everyone. Thanks for letting me join the group. You're welcome. That It's free. I um, was wondering if anyone could help me out with advice on city pages for silos. I'm, I'm redoing my website and rethinking my search engine optimization. I spent four months um, writing landing pages for keyword plus location. Uh, before learning that um, Google doesn't really like doorway pages and the preferred uh, was uh, um, to, um, um, sorry, <laughs> oh dear, um, where, are we? where are we, sorry guys. And the preferred was to have a target page for each service you offer, one location page for the city you work in, and then link the uh, relative services to locations. That sounds about right. Before I was uh, planning keyword locations for each of my services and locations, four services by 20 locations, 80 pages. Now I'm planning one for each, so four by 20, 24 pages. It's easy, a lot easier to avoid duplicate content. Oh, and. Um, and not spread limited content across many pages. The bit I'm not sure of is what actually goes on the city pages. I won't read it. Oh, yes, I will. Um, I'll skip that line. And, and now you're relevant to the location. Maybe advice about local amenities, etc. cetera. Um, is this correct? Um, it's, I've got a schematic of how I think pages link together. I haven't described it properly. Um, he said, thank you, thanks guys. And, and thank you, Lee, for, for, for being your consideration. All right, who is having um, a go at this uh, Does Lee tell us what kind of business he is? Yeah, he does. Um, he's a heating engineer based yeah. in South London. Okay, um, so Lee, why the hell would you want to create a city page, right? like you're in london like you mean area pages i'm guessing now because you're not going to create like you, you know what i mean london's london so you're going to create area pages in south london so first off <clears throat> um it's gonna look quite odd if you are you know, creating a, I mean, what area? No, I mean, I don't know London that well. What area? Um, yeah, well, that's the immediate thing that struck me. You know, South London in itself is not particularly helpful as a geographical description. Yeah. So because I'm yeah. in South London to a certain extent. Yeah. But, you know, it's probably not something that I personally would look for because I'm in sort of Southwest London, hmm. right? Um, so South London can mean quite a lot of different things to a lot of different people. You know, it, it could be just the south side of the Thames, but it can be slightly more specific. So I'm not so sure where he's based. Um, so let's just say, for example, right, he's in Croydon. Okay, like just say for example. Yeah. Okay. So essentially, the 
the way you want to structure your site is now I'm guessing you're a single business. Um, you're not trying to branch out into franchise and all sorts of weirdness. Okay. So let's just say, assuming you're a single, your main site, your main actual site should be the greater area. So um, obviously including the main area you're in now, um, you know, heating, heating engineer, South London. And then because you're actually based in Croydon, ideally you want to, let's say, target or service you want to be the one that services all of them in croydon for example which would probably keep you busy forever anyway you know what i mean uh, because you know the population is like anywhere along there is, is is sufficient so your main top line should kind of be where you are and the greater sort of area right then your location pages can be where you're trying to actually sort of branch out into so for example you could create a location thing for monks orchards and elmer's end and you know around that and you've got to be realistic because you're not going to travel all the way across to wherever to wherever to wherever you know especially with traffic i don't know if you've got congestion charges that side you know all sorts of bollocks you want to try and keep it you want to try one for yourself profitability nearer your location and obviously and obviously where you know uh, the affordability etc cetera, etc cetera. um so if you're going to create those um you don't necessarily need to be adding in all sorts of things about local amenities and things like that you you should be looking at more of uh that's going to that's going to make sense on the page to you so a local amenity you're talking about oh um you know heating and plumbing service monks orchard you're not going to be saying that there's a, a wonderful park in Monk's Orchard, um, you know, for afternoon things with the kids. And that just doesn't make sense. You need to, you know, start looking at, you know, if you're going to create that kind of a page, you need to what makes sense to the user. So are there, for example, I don't know, like, what do you know of the area? Is there, for example, a development there that was up in the 70s? A lot of them are 70s built. You know, because you've serviced a boiler there before, that they are exterior fluted rather than up fluted or whatever. And you know that, you know, and because you've done a few jobs there, and, you know, that makes more sense. You can actually say a lot of properties, Montreal uh, would benefit from XYZ service. This is why. And then, name telephone number contact us you know link to your gmb listing blah 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 the other thing what i find really works for area kind of stuff like this is and it also works for landscapers and plumbers and you know like blah, blah is jobs you've done and create areas on that so our jobs and this would goes back into particular areas have particular issues um if there's a particular building or type of building in an area that's a new build an old build uh, whatever you know and you know you, you do the before image um bosch bosch uh new bosch 27x g uh, uh combi boiler installed in um whatever like you know, what's freaking monks orchards uh i'll tell you now uh -uh. so new combi boiler uh, um install uh in cro 79 in cro right postcode before image you know of the crappy boiler you refer during the image and after because people also want to see you work tidy work clean um then you can give um the reason it was uh, what was wrong with the old one the reason this one new one was installed any problems you came across and then uh same again uh, contact us for a new install in and then cro uh thing and those those kind of pages work well because you're also then targeting the actual product uh because a lot of people will automatically want to try and replace like for like or at least manufacture like for like because they don't know shit about boilers and nor should they but they will see that I've got a Bosch and then they will think, ah, Bosch boiler replacement, right? 
or they've got a link at and they're like link at you know or electric or whatever yeah and you're missing out on all that stuff because you're just thinking location pages right area area pages you're not thinking about all that so also start thinking then of course all of those can be nested within your main thing for monks orchard it can be nested at the bottom of it going check out our jobs in monks orchard and then same you can like th then you can go to like um i don't know selhurst so you have your selhurst location page right um you know just heating boiling engineer blah 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 um contact us find out our hours of operation your gmb map and then you start every time you do a job that gets nested uh you can you know that gets nested within so it's um uh, uh i don't know um <sighs> radiator i don't know i don't know anything about uh honeywell honeywell radiator valve replacement in in whatever the postcode in Selhurst is like um in se25 before after why it was replaced average cost or if you if you're comfortable giving a full on proper cost cost involved uh etc contact us then that can appear at the bottom of check out our jobs in Selhurst. Do, do you see what i mean so it's all working together plus if somebody says oh i want a thingamajiggy for this kind of radiator in this area voila you're satisfying that search query people like to search like for like they typically don't the only time they will typically just pick up and go plumber is when they're in the ship or i need a boiler replacement is when they're in the ship if they are thinking about a boiler replacement they do a lot more research than boiler replacement area right um costs what do i need they probably do a couple of quotations things like this but if you can start nabbing them in between on those particular makes models things like that replacements in that area you're already starting to appeal to them because they know you've serviced that area they can see the quality of work on those pages the beginning the end blah 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 you know you could even then go and once you finish the job you could even go so far as getting the client to leave a GMB rev uh, a, a review on GMB you then also use a plugin to add that specific review from that client into that one you see so all of a sudden you add in all of this other layers to it rather than just I'm like you know I want to just slap on all these location pages because now you're actually making sense to the user for what the product is and their location yeah and i mean i'm just wondering what locations he's talking about um because if they're close by and sort of people associate um them with where they live or where they work i'm not so sure having individual pages would make much a difference because people will look up and say okay and you know if it's on a home page and there's a map that says this is the area i cover these are the postcodes areas that I cover, then that's what's more useful in a sense. If I'm looking for something, um, then I'll be looking for, in my case, I'd be looking for nearby sort of big population centers. You know, I'd be looking at Wimbledon, I'd be looking at Wandsworth, I'd be looking at Putney. Um, so those are, and those are sort of close by. You, and I don't think it would make sense to have um, separate pages on those, for those places, because i would probably be looking at all those three places um but you know, if i ha land on a site that says okay this is the area that our, you know, we cover and i'm in the shaded area that sounds good it covers my postal code great that's wonderful that's good to know um so i'm i'm really not convinced by the idea of having location specific pages especially in somewhere like london where the geographical area the actual area that you're targeting will be pretty small it's not going to be expansive it's going to be densely populated areas right you know south london doesn't mean that lee's going to be doing one job in lewisham and then two hours later he's in surbiton that doesn't make sense it's probably much more um concentrated 
in a small area. So I would concentrate on what people are looking for and how they have reached to your site in, already, because you have that data. So, and if they have, if people have entered the geographical location, very, so pick up. Yeah, very few points. local businesses, although they love to think about it, very few local businesses, actually local searches. Now we're in such an age where people understand that if I just search plumber or heating engineer, they don't need to add in a location. The, typically the only time someone adds in a location is when they're looking for something outside of the location, because we're in an age now where the user is aware that Google tries to match your location to your IP or your phone, or do you see what I mean? Or they're using a VPN where then they have to actually add in the location. Like I've looked at so many local businesses now and you actually look at what converts uh, or what the actual search is that's coming through and hardly any of them include the actual location in it. No, um, but I think that exceptions to that are sometimes that on certainly on desktop um locations might become might yeah. be suggested and yeah. you know if, if when people are refining the searches then it does sort of appear every so often so it's a small amount but i think even then it would still have an indication as to what level of you know geograph geography yeah. that people are looking at so i doubt people will be looking at south london i don't think that's yeah. people will be specifying you know people aren't trying to narrow down their searches by adding south london and the thing is they're not going to be searching for 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 boiler you know that they, they are going to be they search for specific queries you know unless they initiate and they need emergency plumber now emerge you know whatever that's the only time that they will actually just pick um you know people search specifics they want to you know they and and this is where local business you know goes so wrong is you you're relying on that last click so heating engineer wimbledon heating engineer streatham heating engineer clapham it's like if you're relying on that last click for that potential business you you've missed out on every single other potential search that that person made when they woke up in the morning they've gone into their thing the thing's not working it's like oh they've probably done a few things why is my pilot light not on or whatever bosh xyz 27g you know um uh, things like this you know uh, there's so many different queries that the person has searched for before they've decided to make that unless it's an emergency that they need it now right that is the only time that they will just go you know with a location and that prior to that you know uh, i mean as you know lee i mean boilers don't come cheap you you, you typically do a little bit of research before you re you know right okay like the guy last year in the service told me look we're going to be looking at a new replacement you know i've kept it but you're going to need to start looking and then you start looking and these things aren't cheap you know you plan it in you plan on your budget you start looking at replacements you start looking at alternatives to that boiler system um there are so many other search queries out there that provide a lot more value to you than that one single last search query yeah yeah i think sort of um, slightly going back to what I was saying, um, in a sense that instead of sort of thinking in terms of South London, when I see these kind of things, I would always say, go for the, that um, area that people, they associate um, with when they describe where they live. So, you know, um, you know if people are living in Croydon, they'll say, oh, I live in Croydon, that's good. Um, but in other places, and this is purely about, you know, geography, um, sort of that level. Um, always mention the borough and the postcodes when, you, you know, when you, you're referring to areas. I think that's quite important because that's quite specific. Well, I two fantastic um, answers um and um yeah that it makes me really proud to be a part of you guys that's uh, just amazing work 
we just needed David in there for a hat trick. Um, <laughs> all right, the, the, the um, uh, Lee Maloney, um, yeah, that's your lot for today. Um, let's move on to number five on our run list, also from uh, Lee Maloney. Uh, he said, hello, everyone. I have a question about internal links. If you have an article that's relevant to a few different services that you offer, do you link it to both? And if it's also relevant to other articles you've written, uh, do you link it to them too? Thanks. So if it makes sense within the article, <clears throat> you know, if you oh, leave the um, boiler guy in you know, it, uh, heating. So if you are talking about the pilot light um, on the Bosch GR27Y, sometimes it goes out because, you know, that was a cheaper model that they used for new build homes and the whatever, whatever, the thing that is made on the boiler light sometimes burns out after a couple of years. Then you've got another article on there about an upgrade to the Bosch GR 27 G pilot light install. Fine, link it to that. Um, check out, I don't know what kind of site you're running, but a lot of sites will use, you know, you, you have the option in your, in your, um, in, in your kind of article or news section to actually include uh, relevant or related articles that it's normally like sort of five it depends on the titles or you can configure them like either with particular phrases words or the using the title or tag um, and it will you know display sort of at the end of the article on the sidebar depending on how your site's designed it can it can display five relevant you know related articles um, so yeah it, it, it all depends like what what makes sense um if you have listened to 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 us and actually created a uh, kind of a the work we do sort of page and you have miraculously fixed a bosch xrg27 in whatever postcode link it to that you know check out our work whatever at the end of it that's not a problem um but internally link where it makes sense um, if it doesn't make sense and you've written a completely brand new article about the, I don't know, uh, uh, why uh, the craze for vintage radiators may not be such a great idea um, and you haven't actually got anything, you haven't done any work on like radiators or you haven't updated that page, any pages on radiator work you've job, like installs you've done and you haven't got anything like that, well then, you know, go back to it later when you've when you've done that. You can always continually update internal links. Um, you can go back to that later um, and, and just have a call to action on that page. It, it's not the end all, you know, the be all and end all. Um, and you, you can go back. And often when I've updated something on a client site or whatever the, you know, and then you check and then you're like, ah, you know what? Hmm. And then you actually, you, you might find yourself going back and updating a five, six year old piece of content that they already had on there and internally, you know, uh, linking the, linking the two because it makes sense. So it's, you know. Yeah. Everything that Tim says, I, I think the, the thing to do is, is as we've said so many times, don't get too much caught up in the uh, in, in in the the SEO of it. Just think: Is this going to be useful to someone reading this piece? Is this going to give them an extra piece of information that will make life better for them? Um, yeah, if it makes sense, if it if it gives, if it's something that the reader is likely to to want to read, give them the op option of reading it. Thank you, David. All right, let's uh, roll along. Um, let's uh, for for you, uh, Lee, and let's go to the next. Samuel Wolves is asking this question: 
Uh, he said, my site doesn't even pop up when searching Google. Uh, Samuel said, hey, I'm going to be honest. I have no clue what I'm doing. He <laughs> joined the club. <laughs> uh, he said, um, I have a small concrete coatings company in Omaha, uh, Nebraska area. <clears throat> I've done everything from designing my own logo to using Wix to build my own website. I believe in trying things on my own before asking for help. Um, and the um, funds are thin with startups, as we all know. The competition is stiff around here, and I'm really struggling to ex ex exact an online presence and get people to my website. In fact, my site doesn't even pop up when searching Google. I've watched plenty of YouTube videos as well, but I'm just not getting it. This is me taking my shot and asking for help. I'm not asking for anyone to do it for me, but if told what to do, I can figure it out, hopefully. I understand everyone's time is valuable, so I truly appreciate any and all help. Do we know Samuel's um, uh, URL? <laughs> Doesn't look like it. I'm just scanning down to see if it pops up anywhere. Mm, yeah, I don't think he has. I mean, because I've just like obviously it's just search query. I don't mean I don't know what a concrete coating is, but I've searched concrete coatings in Omaha, Nebraska, and like like literally some of them are taken up by MapQuest. Two are taken up better by Better Business Bureau. Like mate, what? There's a Facebook listing in there on, on in organic. So this is doable. Um, two things I would concentrate on. One, optimizing your GMB, right? Two, making sure you're uh, uh, and optimizing your site for local. Wix, not ideal, but it's it can be done, right? Um, and make sure your GMB and your site talk together. Um, Thank you, Tim. Tim, in in these cases, would you sometimes advise that people use the GMB website function and forget about having their own site? Uh, you know, I think because like, I don't actually know what the hell concrete coatings are, but I'm looking at like R and D concrete coatings. <laughs> who is? Um, no, there looks like there's quite a lot of different sort of variations. So the GMB would just be single page. Like I see there's commercial residential epoxy polyspartic staining policy, concrete protection. Um, no, you probably would need a site. And it's because relatively easy to get in, you'd, you'd reckon. Well, yeah, I mean, I think properly optimized. You know, like for that, <clears throat> like, like literally, there's a face, there's, there's Midwest Concrete Coatings Facebook page appearing, like position four. Um, and then there's Better Business Bureaus. And then a map quest, which, like, freaking hell, that's not even a, you know what I mean? Uh, we should certainly be able to get in on that. Freaking hell, there's even an Angie's list. I mean, how fucking old is that? Excuse my French. Jim. <laughs> Beep. Yeah. Sorry, I was too slow, too slow there. Beep. Beep. So, yeah, look, um, I would just concentrate on two things. You know, your GMB for your, you know, GMB specifically. Optimize it, update it, add your services in, add your product in, right? Make sure that that is correct properly working within your site, whether you put in a location map. If you're a service area business, then it doesn't matter. You can still embed that map onto the site or use HazMap in your CRD. Make sure that your site is actually optimized properly. Concrete coatings, 
um, whatever you, you know, Samuels Concrete Coatings, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, you know, your proper, you know, like if you epoxy floor, whatever, Omaha, Nebraska. Um, you know, especially for a location based business, definitely, you know. Okay. Let's go to number seven on our run list. It's from Sakib Shadman. It's titled A Secondary Keyword to Assist Another Primary Keyword. He said, Hiya, folks. I've got one primary keyword for a content X. Can I use the same keyword once on another content as a secondary keyword? keyword to assist another primary keyword. Please put your hand up if you have a clue what um, Saki was talking about. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's this uh, it's this Lego notion of how content works, where you build it up uh, with various nice little bricks. Uh, no, I don't, I'm not going to be quite as uh, sarcastic as that. Don't think, don't think in terms of assisting primary and secondary keywords. Uh, think about the themes of uh, of your pages. What are they about? Um, are they um, are they clearly different in terms of topics? Uh, are they unique in terms of topics? It doesn't matter if there's a bit of overlap. Is this page clearly about something different than that page? Go ahead and write them. Write them about those things, and don't worry about you re reusing a uh, uh, a key phrase or keyword. Um, you know, don't create a load of uh, content that's all the same or similar, um, because. Uh, Google might think you're creating duplicate content, ignore it all, and your uh, your efforts may be completely wasted. Um, just think about what your why are you writing these pages? You're writing them hopefully for your your readers, your customers, um, and is it worth reading this page as well as that page? If the answer is no, there's probably a good chance that you shouldn't uh, write the second page. I hope that makes sense, um, but don't think about this this kind of building up primaries and secondaries and first floor and second floor and whatever. Uh, think about themes. Think about what the pages are about, and whether they are significantly different, and whether there's a good reason for it being on your site. Yeah. Maybe yeah yeah i think it comes down to that doesn't it does it make sense as a piece of writing as a piece of content as it does it make sense to have those keywords i have a feeling that underlying this question and these types of questions is the notion of if you like a zero-sum game of keywords so i think this question if you flip it around um, I have a feeling that Sir Kibbs worried about detracting from the primary page, if that makes sense. So, you know, if the same keyword were to be used on two different pages, one as the main, on another as an assistant, if you like, then does that detract, does that reduce the importance of the primary importance on the primary page i think i think it's that kind of idea behind this question and i think it's right and problem say don't worry about that too much don't overthink this mm -hmm. so I, I think th th there is there is uh the thing that's just hit me of course is uh this this great old um SEO thing about content cannibalization, keyword cannibalization, or whatever we call it. 
Um, you know, there, there, uh, there are tools that supposedly measure it. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it's such a, a bad thing. Uh, I think you can, um, you, you can rank, um, you know, more than one page uh, on the first uh, page of the, the SERPs uh, for a particular search. Um, so, you know, why, you know, why bother about trying to make sure that you don't have any sniff of a particular key phrase on that page because you've used it on this page? Um, yeah, uh, I think, you know, do write your content, you know, write your content for a purpose, for your people, for your visitors, for your customers. Um, and don't worry about it. Um, when you've got a bloody great site, um, I don't know if you want to bleep bloody. Um, not quite as bad as uh, Tim's contributions to the uh, to, to the uh, uh, to the to the dumb SEO question hangout or whatever we call it these days. Um, <clears throat> no, so um, yeah, don't really don't overthink it. Don't waste your time. Just get on and write some unique content that just doesn't overlap um, in terms of, of themes and content. Yeah. Oh, content, yeah. content. You know what I mean. <laughs> Thank you, David. That was great. All right. Uh, any, any more for this? Okay. Let's move on to... Uh, Number eight on our list, it's from Oana Valen. Uh, it's titled Backlink from a Partners Page. Um, and Oana goes on to say, uh, does a backlink from a, from a, a uh, partners page with a uh, 36 domain authority, 24 page authority, goodness me, 1% um, spam score, but no links have any search engine optimization value. I wonder if someone is uh, trying to flog uh, on a, um, a link. Uh, from this page, um, I wonder if there's um, that this is some kind of deal. You give us some some money for it, um, in which case um, it's doubly dubious. Um, <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Um, I I very I very much doubt it has much. Um, much SEO value. Um, I wonder if if this is a true partner, um, whether it might have some reason for someone clicking on it and uh, uh, and looking at your business. But I don't know. Um, it's difficult to see. We don't know what the business is. We don't know what kind of partners these are. But I I smell some kind of uh, link building. Uh, operation going on here in which case i would uh, uh, i would leave it thank you david okay let's go on to number nine on our own list from marie sa and can she, she her, her question is titled can someone explain seo linking patterns to me Murray goes on to say, our SEO consultant gave me instructions on updating an old blog post uh, and including links to landing pages in them. Does this make sense? Um, is it an effective strategy? Um, it's it's a bit it's a bit broad this question, um, but uh, I can give a broad answer, I guess. Um, 
which is that internal linking uh, done well and sensibly um, can help you a lot. Um, updating an old blog post. Um, if you think there's a there's a way of making the content better and gives some more traction, that's also sensible. Um, but over and over, without actually understanding what's going on here, um, the, the, the answer is yes, but with the proviso that uh, there may be more in here that I'm not able to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any more for this? Okay. Number 10 on our run list. Um, it's titled, Should They Change All No Follow Affiliate Links to RHEL's Sponsor? Um, and uh, this um, is from Sohail Kadir. Um, John Mueller had, had a, a, a bit of input into this one. Anyway, let's um, see what the answers bring. Um, link, spam, link spam update is about to roll. Some people were worried about their nofollow affiliate links. Should they change all nofollow affiliate links to roll sponsor? Uh, and here is the... Uh, answer from uh, the authority and um that's what i was talking about it it, it was john Mueller that um, had something to say but we don't say it okay Anybody? Um, what's this link spam, Alga? <sighs> I haven't even. I haven't heard. Uh, of it. Okay, mm. let's let's have a quick. Uh, well, uh, no, no, no. It's going to be even more effective as identifying and nullifying link spam more broadly across multiple languages. Okay, so this is about link spam. Um, uh, okay, hang on. So they go on to where's the freaking link to the post? Come on, Barry. Why does he link to it? Uh, there we go. Right, right, right. Okay, let's find the actual thing because apparently they give us. Okay, best practices. Mm. Uh, so web creators know there's many ways to monetize their websites and blogs. Some of these methods lead to creation of outbound links. If overdone and not annotated correctly, it could violate our quality guidelines. Um, da -da -da. We want to remind how to deal with links of a commercial nature and how we continue to work to lessen the impact of links spam on our results. Um, okay, so affiliate links on each page, such as product, da, 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 way for <clears> blog <throat> publishers to monetize their traffic, should be using real sponsored. Um, I think if you are using a no follow on it, um, look, you may as well change it to no sponsored, but uh, to real sponsored. But I think, don't think a real no follow would. They would all of a sudden go no we don't like that you have to use no because you're already saying treat this as um so personally i don't see it but if they have specifically rolled this out and it's on site reminder um i don't think a problem i don't think there'll be a problem with using rel no follow but as we know, when Google rolls, you know, makes these suggestions, it takes them quite some time. So I would, as a matter of course, probably start updating it to rel sponsored. You know, we may as well. You've, they've, you know, they've even given us nice pretty pictures about affiliate links and blah, blah, blah. 
when to use rail, rail sponsored. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't think if you're already using rail no follow, that's not a problem. But I would say if they've gone to the effort of creating nice little pictures for you, uh, we may as well, you know, update those. Yeah, I mean, if it if it's simple, if it doesn't take you too much time or effort to mm -hmm. change um, the link to, uh, from no follow to sponsor, then do it. Um, but is it the most important thing? Is it the thing that you really have to do now? Probably not. Um, so it's going to be low in the priority list of your to-do list. Um, so it's one of those things that, um, in theory, should, in inverted commas, be done. And if you can do it, why not? But is it going to make a huge difference? Is it going to have, a, have an immediate repercussion? Most likely, no. Especially as you already have no follow. Yeah, I, th I think the I think the key thing is in one of the pre previous paragraphs here. The in fact the previous par paragraph. Um, it says um, a best practice is to avoid methods of acquiring links that violate our guidelines against link schemes. Um, and I think that that's that's really uh, what it's. Um, what this uh, update is probably about. Um, I haven't read this in detail, but I would, I would agree with what Tim and Massa have said. That uh, I think that on its own, just those links, if they were no follow, um, changing them to sponsors, probably not a lot. Probably not a a lot to be had. Um, depends what you know, <laughs> how many of them there are, and whether. Uh, Google can see them as a, a, a link scheme. Uh, and if Google could possibly see them as a link scheme, uh, then perhaps even changing no follow to sponsored will uh, get you out of the poo. Um, yeah. Did that get us anywhere? I don't know. But I, I suspect that changing no follow to sponsored, uh, like Mass and Tim said, uh, is not a big thing. Okay, any more? Let's go to number 11. From Jade and Sherry, um, it's titled Why None of the Services Subpages Are Displaying in Search Engine Result Pages. Um, Jade said, went on to say, uh, please advise why none of the services subpages are displaying in search. Uh, for example, the subpage https full colon slash slash insurance warehouse.org slash car dash insurance slash um, won't display when searching car insurance Monticello um, GA. Um, the SERP link is https full colon slash slash www.google.com slash search. Um, yeah, um, car insurance Monticello plus GA. Um, who would like to have a go at this one? It's um, it's a financial services site. Um, you're going to have to work very hard, um, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> excuse me, to get this content to uh, this this um, site to rank. Partly because there's a lot of co uh, um, <clears throat> a lot of competition. Excuse me, uh, hay fever. Um, a lot of competition in this sort of area, and partly because Google makes it very difficult for you. Uh, because um, he, the, the, because Google talks about um, your money or your life uh, type uh, um, sites, and this is a your money site. Um, so you you have to you have to do all sorts of things, jump 
through hoops and show your expertise and the quality of what you've what you're offering um so um you the page that uh the page that you you give us as an example the car insurance uh, so, um, car insurance uh, page okay so there, there are there are a few hundred words on it but they're they're all a bit so what um you know a paragraph a couple of lines on on each thing um someone's going to do, have done it properly somewhere um just must um you know whether you've <clears throat> whether you're talking uh whether you're worrying about your money type sites it's just you know, you there's lots of others out there, and someone would have done it better than you. Um, you've got to try hard, hard on that. It's I suspect it's as simple as that. Um, uh, yeah, that, that's my suggestion anyway. Think about it. Think think about your um, your competitors and how they are doing it better than you. Thank you, David. All right, let's move on to number 12 on our run list. Florium has three questions it's titled. Florium Krasniki uh, said, hello, I have a video website and I have five to seven categories and for each category I have one to 200 video posts. Uh, if I use this structure, link, will it be as a duplicate content Duplicated content, um, www.mysite.com slash category slash name dash video. Or is it better just to just use www.mysite.com slash name dash video? I'm not sure where that, how does that fit? Where, where, where is that? Is, oh, I see. It's got the category. All right. Are we doing these questions one by one, or are you going to whiz through them all? Um, look, um, second question, what's your idea about the meta description? How many words should I include? Because my site is only for video, and can I rank with a few words? And the third question is, is it better to just embed my videos from YouTube or host myself? Um, which performs better on SEO? Um, I think the state of the, the world at the moment is that um, if you have a video site with only video on it, um, you're going to struggle to to rank organically on search. Um, so you you need to think about what um, what search engine understandable content. Um, is going to uh, is it, you can put on your site. The obvious thing is, um, um, is the script or, or the content um, as text of your videos. Um, so think about a transcription. Um, so that that would that would be a um, a, a general and a big and fundamental piece of. Uh, uh, piece of advice for you. Um, I'm going back to your first question. Let's, let's see if I can uh, answer the the questions as asked. Um, yeah, the um, category uh, name video or just name video. Your the the it depends. You you won't necessarily get duplicated content by putting category in it unless you manage to. Um, or unless you assign um, a video to more than one category, um, if it's if it's in more than one category, it will turn up as three identical pages. Um, so you can possibly get into duplicate content um, um, problems there. Uh, how do, what should I do about my meta description? Um, write uh, write a piece of um a piece of normal words don't worry about uh, about number or um or what they are in terms of uh key phrases just just write um i think offhand there are, it's about 160 words for a, 
um, for a, a message description. So, you know, right, 120, 160 words. Um, and uh, and do that. Um, but think about what you're saying to the, the person who sees this in, uh, uh, in the search uh, results, but without some search engine, engine readable content on your website, they, it won't turn up in the uh, search results. So that's academic. Um, is it best to embed my videos from YouTube or to host myself? Oh, that's an interesting one. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, yes. Okay. I'm sorry about that. I don't know about the third one. And I hope I've uh, helped with the, the first and the second. Google video schema. I haven't heard of that. Um, I mean, on a three, I'm not 100% sure um, what the issue is. So if you try to embed a video file and you host it locally, um, it doesn't necessarily increase your loading time. Because it will if it's autoplay, but if it's not, um, it shouldn't have too much um, repercussions in terms of your loading time. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Turkey. All right. So, um, it's it's unfortunate that this this one came up um, uh, at the end when we've all run out of steam. <laughs> um, but David, you, you, you've given a, a, a great answer anyway. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll click this button. Yes, it is. It's thank you for watching time. All right. So, um, well, um, before I go, I, I, I must thank uh, the people like uh, Brenda Malone and... Um, Michael Martinez, um, the stalwarts, uh, the, the, the strength of dumb SEO questions uh, and um, the answers that are given out uh, as soon as they arrive on the dumb SEO questions Facebook group and the quality of the review of, of those answers uh, um, in our weekly recording. Um, I tell you, um, I think it's pretty wonderful. Anyway, Tim, um, uh, you, you just had your uh, needle today, was it, or yesterday? No, yeah, Tuesday. Yesterday I was sick as a dog. Just, uh, just don't walk into it, Tim. I, I, I can see, I can see a, a trap opening up here. Yeah, I know. He's 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 probably going to make some weird ass freaking Australian joke about me being put down like a dog or something. Don't be racist, Jim. Although because I'm African. <laughs> Not that spiel again. <laughs> I get out of jail free card. What? What? You don't like Africans? <laughs> Oh, he's very unkind. I was going to say something really nice, you know, but then anyway. <laughs> Why break the habit of, habit of a lifetime, Jim? Oh. <laughs> All right, let, let's um, let's um, right, let's stop this recording. Um, if you if you're still watching, we'll be back at the same time next week. 
uh, to do this uh, all again. Okay, turn that off.